What's going on guys? It's time for another ratings review. Today EA released the top 20 left defensemen and right defensemen in NHL 24. So of course I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. If you enjoy these ratings review videos, please give a thumbs up. It really helps me out. But getting started guys with the left defense. At number one we got Roman Yossi. No complaints from me. I think he is the number one left defenseman in the NHL. I will say 94 overall is probably a tad high for him. Personally, I would probably have no higher than a 93, maybe even a 92. I think like the right defensemen are a little bit stronger than the left side. Um, now look at the individual stats here. They are supposed to be working at this point. You know, they're supposed to be accurate. I have found, you know, a few things are definitely a bug, but overall I think they're pretty good. You can see they've actually got him having the wheel zone ability, which is kind of interesting. He's pretty fast. I'm not sure if I would say that's his best ability. To me, it'd be like tape to tape percentage. because obviously, you know, he's such a good playmaker, has so many assists as a defenseman. Now, speaking of his X Factors, there's no way he's only got these three, so he probably does have the passing ones. For whatever reason, like the X Factors on the site seem to be glitched. The attributes though are supposed to be right. I will say 93 offense awareness and 97 defense awareness for Roman Yossi. That is so off. Like those have to be switched. I really don't understand that one. Like he's an offensive defenseman. Defensive game isn't terrible, but it's definitely not like his best stat, which is actually what they're showing here. So uh, they need to flip those. And if it lowers his overall to a 92 or 93, at that point, it'd actually be pretty much perfect. Um, after him, you got Victor Hedman at number two, 93 overall. I personally don't think Hedman is the second best left-hand defenseman in the league. Uh, he's probably in the top five and he's probably five, but I'm um, looking at it here, 93 overall. Again, for me, I think he's probably more like a 90, which actually is what he was rated last year. How he got bumped up through overall, I have no idea. He had less points this season, not only total, but points per game wise. Also too, defensively, he was kind of atrocious. I don't know how much you know stock you guys put in analytics, but if you look at that there, was not very good defensively. So how Hedman got a plus three, I don't understand. Again, I think if they left him at a 90, it would have been perfect. I look at his stats here, 95 D awareness. Again, way too high D awareness, just like Yossi, but um, Yossi actually deserves a higher D awareness right now than Hedman does. I look at his strength stat though, it's 92. Um, the rest of this stuff, slap shot power should be high, it's 93. You know, overall, apart from the D awareness and him being too high rated, Hedman stats don't look terrible, terrible, but again, I'm a bit too high. Um, after him, you got Rasmus Dahlin at number three, 91 overall. I think Dahlin at number three is a 91 overall is actually about perfect. I personally have him at number three, 91 overall. I'd probably have him as a 90 or 91. So um, I think they did pretty good in that regard. His stats here, definitely can too high defense awareness, but it's because of how the overall is calculated. Um, offense awareness should, you know, be a lot higher because he was good in that regard. The rest of them there doesn't look too bad. I will say, I noticed he's got 87 speed to Hedman's 88. Um, how Hedman is faster than Dalene, I don't quite understand. I know he is bigger, but in game, even if you're slower, if you have those bigger strides, you'll make up for it a bit. So, um, Hedman being faster than Dalene should not be the case. Next up here, guys, number four, we got Quinn Hughes, 90 overall. Um, I think Quinn Hughes at 90 is pretty good rating. Um, I will say, speaking of speed, Quinn Hughes here has 95 speed. Now, Quinn Hughes is a very, very good skater, but he's not one of the fastest skaters in the NHL. I think his 96 agility is accurate. He is, you know, very agile, but uh, the speed in XL there should probably be like a 90. And kind of perfect timing, the NHL actually just released on Twitter all of the top speeds from the league last season, both forward and defenseman. You look at the defenseman speeds there, McCarr leads the way. Um, Quinn Hughes actually isn't even in the top 10. So uh, to me, 95 speed for a defenseman is definitely in the top 10 of the league. Uh, Quinn Hughes, like I said, too high, should be a 90, but leave the agility. Again, though, the 90 overall for him, I think is fair. 95 offense awareness, uh, 97 passing, honestly, could even be a 99. He's one of the best playmaking defense we've seen in NHL in quite some time. 90 D awareness is actually, I think, a lot more fair than the D awareness we have seen. So yeah, I think, you know, Hughes' speed there is a little bit too high, but other than that, um, I actually agree with most of these. I'm sure he's got like third eye zone ability or something if it's not tape to tape, which honestly it probably should be. Also, I think he should have elite edges, just like his two brothers will definitely have. Now, number five here, we've got Miro Heiskanen. I think he's actually underrated, 90 overall. Personally for me, I'd actually swap him with Victor Hedman. So the top five goes Yossi one, Heiskanen two, then Delane, then Hughes, and then Hedman there at fifth. I feel like Heiskanen at 90, definitely underrated, should be at least a 91, if not a 92. I think he's one of the more underrated defensemen in the league for whatever reason. Probably because he doesn't put up the points that some of the other guys do, but very solid defensively. A 93 D awareness there, I think you could actually bump up a bit. Um, I think look at the rest of his card. He's got 91 speed, which is probably a little bit high on him as well. Um, then 88 agility, that should probably be switched with the speed. I think he could be a stronger player than 86, kind of seems low. He could increase his poise there. Again, uh, Heiskanen, not bad, but they definitely could give him a bump here. Now next you guys, number six, we got Shea Theodore. He's probably one of my favorite defensemen to draft in fantasy. You can always get him at good value. He's so good offensively, always puts up points. Um, 89 overall there, you can see 92 offensive awareness, 91 D. He should be more offensive, 92 passing. Honestly, his passing, I think, should be even better than that. Um, apart from that, though, he actually looks to be pretty good. Number six, I think, is actually very fair for Theodore. 
finally getting respected. He wasn't even inside the top 10 for quite some time. Uh, Josh Morrissey, of course, coming off a career year. Also 89 overall, I think. Uh, pretty solid rating for Morrissey. It's tough when guys, you know, haven't done too much, you know, a couple seasons prior than one year they explode. Um, 89, I think, would definitely be the highest I'd have him. Maybe 88, but uh, it's not too bad. Passing 95. Yeah, so I think Theodore should have higher passing than Morrissey. He's kind of been more productive of an offensive defense than Morrissey has um, over the past three years. So that's a tad high. Apart from that, though, I think, you know, doesn't look too bad in terms of the rest of his stats. Um, after that, Devin Tate's here, number eight, 89 overall, of course, um, part of that, you know, top pair on the Avalanche with Bakar. I actually think Devin Tate's 89 is a little bit underrated. Um, I think last year he didn't have the points he did the year before, but he actually was better defensively. So uh, they dropped in overall from 90-89. The thing is, even though he didn't have the points, he was a better defensive defenseman. So um, in my mind, defensive awareness there could be higher. Um, poised 90, which is good to see. He's definitely very poised. Um, he's got good skating there. It's, you know, 89. Slap shot uh, is low 90s. Overall, I think this is pretty good. But again, I actually wouldn't have dropped him in rating. I think um, sometime EA relies too much on points, especially when it comes to defensemen. I feel like for forwards, it makes sense. That's their job for defensemen. That's not their only job. They also, you know, have to play defense. Speaking of which, one of the best defensive defensemen in the league, Jacob Slavin here, 88 overall. I also think it's underrated. I think Slavin should be a 90 at least, maybe a 91. He's just that good defensively. 93 day awareness, you could definitely bump that to a 95. Poise there could definitely be bumped up to like a 90 or 95. He is so poised. Discipline as well should be like a 95. He doesn't take any bad penalties. So uh, yeah, Slavin here, definitely a bit too underrated uh, considering you know the kind of game he plays. You'd expect it. And then finally here we got Thomas Shabbat rounding out the top 10. I think Shabbat 88 is pretty fair. Maybe a tad high. Should probably be like an 87. I will say though, uh, for skating here, they got an 89 speed, 88 excel, 87 agility. I think Shabbat's one of the better skating defensemen in the league. Um, again, you might not have the speed like Quinn Hughes, but his agility there should be, you know, 90 plus in my opinion. They even gave him elite edges. So how is agility his worst of the skating stats? Um, those should be definitely a little bit higher. Um, definitely a bit more offensive. So again, defensive awareness being higher doesn't make sense. Um, passing is pretty good there at 90. Deacon and Hand either, I think, could both be higher than 84. So um, Shabbat could be a lower overall, but I feel like um, his attributes there need a little bit of work. Um, next up here, guys, number 11, we got Mikhail Sergeyev, former Spitfire. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, 85 speed only for him. Same with Agility Excel. Seems a little bit low. I don't think he's quite that slow. I feel like if him and Hedman raced, Sergeyev probably beats him. And Hedman's got, what, like 88 speed? Um, 88 overall, though, I think is a pretty fair rating for him. He's honestly kind of taking over Hedman's spot as a number one defenseman on Tampa. That might be a bit controversial, but I feel like they're definitely a lot closer in real life than they are in the game right now. Hedman being 93, Sergeyev being 88. If Hedman was a 90 and Sergeyev was an 89, I think that represents real life a bit better. So that's where I think, you know, EA could do a little bit better job on their ratings. On number 12 here, Adam Pellick, another, you know, defense first defenseman. 88, I think pretty fair for him. No X factors. Hopefully that's a bit of a glitch. He should definitely have, you know, stick him up, maybe like the shot blocking one, uh, maybe like the shutdown one. The fully defensive ones basically is what I'm saying. Uh, defensive awareness there is 92. So uh, good to see. Could make that maybe higher because offensive awareness there is so low. Uh, you look at his stick checking 93, uh, shot blocking 91. So uh, overall, not bad, but definitely, you know, throw a couple X factors on him. Uh, next up here, guys, Hampus Lindholm, number 13. Definitely played a lot better with the Boston Bruins than he had the Anaheim Ducks. 88 for Lindholm. I feel like that may be a bit high. I know he kind of stepped in and played really well when McAvoy was out. For me, 87 probably makes more sense for him. I'm willing, you know, to argue any Boston Bruins fans, though, in the comments. I'm um, looking at his stats here. Can't really argue too much about anything. Apart from I see hand eye 82, that seems surprisingly low. Um, other than that, though, I think it looks to be pretty fine. Uh, Zach Wierenski here, number 14. Obviously a Michigan boy. I like that about him. Also, I've met him a couple times. Very good guy. Um, I think a sign for him is pretty fair. You could honestly probably even have Wenske 88. Like, he was injured most of last year, and I think he was higher rated last year. So to drop him after an injury seems a bit uh, not fair to the player. But I'm um, looking at his stats here. He's got pretty good skating stats. I'd probably have his agility higher than his speed. Again, uh, kind of seems strange. Some of these passing 90 could also probably be a bit higher. Um, overall, though, most of these look pretty good. Again, a, a low hand eye stat. It must just be something uh, they do for most defensemen. Good stick check. Overall, aside from being a little bit low rated, Renski looks fine. Uh, Vince Dunn, 87. Another defenseman had a career season last year. Playing, of course, with the Kraken. Put up a lot of points. So, I uh, will see his passing there. He's now a 91. He's got 88 deking. His shot there. Let's see. 89 power, 84 accuracy. 
Vince Dunn, 87, it's hard to argue. He had a very good season last year. Um, again, when you kind of look at the last season for being like the heaviest weighted thing for the overall, I think that makes sense. I mean, T.S. Eklund there, ace on overall, a solid two-way defenseman. I think the Oilers have a deep playoff run this season. He'll be a big part of that. Um, 91 there, that's not his speed, is it? Because, okay, that's balance. I was going to say, Eklund should not have 91 speed, but no, it's 87 he's got. He's actually got like almost the exact same skating stats there as Darnell Nurse. Could do both these guys together. They're both on the Oilers. They're both left-handed. Um, Eklund better have higher defensive awareness, though, because Nurse is a bit more offensive. Uh, he's got 90 discipline there, which is good to see. 90 poise. Ekholm here looks pretty solid. Nurse here has higher defensive awareness and offensive, which I'm sure if you asked any of these fans, they would tell you is not accurate. 91 body checking, though, of course, likes to throw the body. So that's good to see. Um, overall, you know, I think those are pretty decent. Uh, Donis Brodin here, another very good defensive defenseman. Only 87 speed for him, though. Or sorry, he's got 88 speed. That's the balance stat there. That one's the speed. That's still too low. I think Brodeen should have a bit higher, especially since I think he's one of the fastest, if not the fastest, backward skater in the NHL. Uh, you look at the rest of his stats there. 92 D awareness is nice to see. Um, discipline 90. I don't think he takes many penalties, so that's good as well. Um, 85 poise. Stick checking 92. Uh, shot blocking 90. I think, you know, overall they got Brodeen pretty good, but should have given him a bit of a boost there in speed and definitely give him the in reverse X factor. Morgan Riley here at 19, a sign overall. I'm a little bit lower than last season, obviously. More of an offensive defenseman. Good to see they got that right. I think Riley here actually looks pretty solid. And then finally, number 20, Mackenzie Wieger. He's another guy who actually had a decent season last year with the Flames defensively. Didn't, of course, have the points he had with the Panthers. So I believe he dropped in rating a bit. But uh, Mackenzie Wieger is not a bad defenseman at all. I think um, 87, more than fair for him, honestly. Could maybe even give him a bump to 88. We'll see how he does, you know, this year at the Flames. I think, you know, him, Huberdeau, a lot of guys on that team looking to rebound and have a bounce back season. Next, guys, moving over to the right defenseman. I already showed he's the fastest defenseman in the league according to NHL stats, and the EA got that here. 97 speed, 98 agility, and 97 acceleration from Makar, who I should mention as well, is 95 overall, making the highest rated defenseman in the game, which I don't think anyone's going to argue. As you can see, it's only showing one X-Factor, so that's how I know the X-Factors definitely are not right. But uh, the rest of his attributes there, 96 offense awareness, 95 defensive, 97 deking and passing, 97 puck control. Honestly, the stats he has are pretty similar to what I have in my roster, and he's always a beast in the sim, so I think this year is going to be the same. He's also going to be the best defenseman you use in HUT or whatever other game mode you're playing, so uh, McCarr is nasty. He deserves that rating. Uh, number two here, Charlie McAvoy, 92 overall. Nice to see McAvoy finally get respected. Definitely a very good defenseman, often underrated. Um, I think 92 is fair for him. Honestly, if anything, maybe even give him a slight bump to a 93, but 92 I think is probably fair. 95 defense awareness is good to see. Take to take, he does... Um, of course, put up a good amount of assists. 94 stick check. McAvoy there is pretty solid. Now, Adam Fox here at 92 overall. So, uh, you might think that's a pretty good rating. I personally think it's way too low, especially when you compare it to, like, Victor Hedman being a 93. Adam Fox is a better defense than the Victor Hedman right now, 100%. Uh, Yossi even a 94. I would take Fox over Yossi. So, um, I feel like Fox is underrated here for sure. At least a 93. Honestly, I'd probably make Fox a 94. And then I'd have probably McAvoy, 93. And again, those would be like the top three guys in the game. Yossi, you could maybe also make a 93, so he's tied with McAvoy. But uh, Fox here, definitely getting a little bit disrespected by EA, in my opinion. We'll take a look at the stats. Um, equal offense, defense awareness, 95 passing, so that's good to see. 95 poise. Honestly, yes, yeah, so they just have to bump some of these stats. But overall, uh, really no glaring issues. Stick checking, 94. Yeah, he looks to be like a very good just all-around defenseman. Um, Eric Carlson, number four, 91 overall. So he's a guy that's very hard to grade because of course he's an all offensive defenseman but last year he won the Norris simply due to how many points he put up on one of the worst teams in the NHL with the Sharks so clearly he's one of the best offensive defensemen in the league which is why I think even though he doesn't really play any defense he's him being a 91 overall is actually still pretty fair uh, now you look at his stats here 97 offensive awareness only 89 defensive uh, he's got 97 passing there so I think that's the same as Quinn Hughes honestly you could give them both 99 I don't mind you know throwing out some 99 stats here and there I think it makes the game a bit more fun He's got 95 poise, 94 deking, 96 puck control there. He's got a solid shot. Yeah, I really don't have any complaints here with Carlson's stats. Although, he does have 90 speed here, where Adam Fox is 93. I feel like Carlson's probably faster than Adam Fox. I could be wrong on that one, but I'm like very, very certain that Carlson, uh, especially when he's healthy, when he's got his legs under him, he's one of the faster defensemen in the league. So I think those two should probably be switched, especially like Fox there, 94 excel to Carlson's 90. I don't know, like the eye test, I feel like Carlson's faster. Uh, number five here, Dougie Hamilton, 90 overall. I think that's pretty fair. Hamilton last year probably didn't have like his best season ever with the Devils, but it wasn't bad or anything. Um, of course, he's another guy that a lot of people don't realize just how good he is. 95 offensive awareness for him with only 90 D awareness. They actually, you know, have a guy that's more offensive having the right awareness is there. So I'm not sure why, you know, he gets that where 
others do not. Very powerful slap shot there at 94. Um, he's got 88 deking there. Hand eye is not bad. 88 shot blocks and 92 stick check. Overall, I feel like Dougie Hamilton's stats aren't too bad. The one T X factor for him, I'm not sure if that's what I would give him, but I don't even know if you guys actually agree with that. I'll make sure to leave it. Uh, number six here, John Carlson, of course, a solid offensive defenseman as well, which is somewhat represented there in game. I feel like he could also have like a 95 offensive with an 88 defensive, make it a bit more accurate. I uh, at his passing stat 93, slap shot power 94. He's definitely got a heavy slap shot on him. So overall, not too bad. I'd probably have Carlson slightly lower, like an 89, but it's pretty close. We're not going to complain too much. Um, Alex Petrangelo here at number seven, 89 overall. His attributes, I think, are definitely messed up. I think 89 for him is a fair rating. Could maybe even make Trangelo a 90, but um, he's got 93 speed, 94 agility, 93 excel. There's no way that's accurate. If that is accurate, I don't know what they're watching. Like, obviously, he was in the Stanley final. He was in the playoffs, you know, longer than anyone else. Uh, you got to watch a lot of Petrangelo. He is not that fast. They've also got him at 83 strength and only 80 aggressiveness. I'm not sure if you guys saw the two-handed full-on slash he did to Dreyse out of last year in the playoffs, but... Uh, that warrants a little bit more than 80 aggressiveness in my mind. So, yeah, I mean, look at this here. 76 body check. Um, his card is definitely messed up. So, really, uh, no reason to spend much more time on it. Clearly, I don't know who this is supposed to be, but uh, it's not Petrangelo. So, we'll keep moving on. Uh, number 8 here, Drew Doughty, 89 overall. Had, you know, a bit of a bounce back year last year, even the year before that. After a couple tough seasons in LA, I think 89 for Doughty is probably fair at this point. Um, you look at his card there. Pretty all-around defenseman, high 80, low 90s for kind of everything. I think that's pretty accurate for Drew Doughty. Uh, number nine here, Mort Sider, of course, one of my favorite defensemen in the league, being a Red Wing. Um, right here, this is also got to be a glitch, 97 acceleration. As much as I like Sider, there's no way he has 97 acceleration. Um, also, two regards to his rating, 88, I think is very fair. Maybe even an 87 for Sider, but of course, I would have him like at highly potential. Um, if you look at the rest of his stats, somehow he got the 50 face-off, while Drew Doughty got the 70. I don't understand how that happens. The red bar there just is like standing out. I wonder if someone at EA just wanted me to see that red on Sider. But uh, look at his stats. 90 body checking, of course. He's got back at you, truculence. Um, the rest of his stats, 89 passing, pretty powerful slap shot, 90 stick check, uh, 90 shot blocking. I think you know Sider's card here. It looks pretty good. And then round up the top 10, Chris Letang, also 88 overall. I think it's very fair for Letang. Very curious to see, you know, how him and Carlson can be utilized on the Penguins this season. I feel like Carlson will definitely be you know, power play one, which means, of course, the Tang will be power play two, so his points definitely might take a hit in that regard, but um, overall, the Tang there does look pretty good. So, moving on now, guys, to 11 to 20. You got Brandon Montour at number 11, so he's another one. Definitely had a career year last season in the Florida Panthers. Um, has never done a season like that in his life, so big jump to 88. Oh, it's so tough, because, like, when you want to weigh, like, the other seasons, personally, I like to, you know, do a three-year scale. I feel like EA does basically last year, but, like, a little bit of the season before as well. Uh, Montour 88 is probably fine. I think ideally he's more like an 87. And if he proves it again this year, uh, then you start putting him up into that 88, 89 category. But uh, he was definitely a big reason why Florida was so good um, in their playoff run. Uh, right behind him, actually tied with him, Aaron Ekblad, number 12. Ekblad, I think, has been a better defenseman over his career for sure, which is why having him in the same ring as Montour, I'm not sure if I quite agree with that. Uh, Montour definitely, I think, put up more points last season, but Ekblad uh, better defensively, which is shown there by the 92D awareness. He's also quite strong, 89 strength, 87 body check. Uh, both of those could actually be a little bit higher, maybe. So, overall, I play not too bad. Um, Seth Jones there, 87 overall. Obviously, playing one of the worst teams in the league, Chicago Blackhawks. So, 87 for Jones is about where I'd have him. I maybe have him like an 86, but um, 87 isn't the end of the world. He's like the only good defense on the Blackhawks. Uh, number 14 here, Ryan Pollock. So, he definitely got screwed over in the last video that I showed you guys a slap shot power. Only 92. Um, he should definitely have a 94. Tied with Dougie Hamilton, tied with Carlson. If not 95 actually be higher than those guys but as you can see here 80 offense awareness 92 d awareness that can't be right either like that's just way too low i mean just the fact he has that shot that seems kind of crazy um, apart from that though i mean the rest of his stats there don't look too bad on um, 15 jared spurgeon a cent overall spurgeon i think there makes sense i'm um, looking at defense awareness there 90 he's actually pretty solid defensively even though he's like a small defense and you wouldn't really expect it uh stick checking 91 He's got decent skating stats as well. I think Spurgeon there looks pretty good. Uh, no Dobson here at 16, 87 overall. Honestly, higher than I expected Dobson to be rated. I thought he'd be like an 85, 86. I don't know if I necessarily hate it. I just do think it might be a tad high. I'm um, looking at his stats there. 92 offense awareness. He, he did have a pretty solid season last year in terms of putting up points. Again, that's why I think EA sometimes looks too much at points for defensemen, but not too bad. Again, I'd probably have him like 86 maybe, so not far off. Uh, Brent Burns there, also 87. I uh, have his stats here. He's got the 92 strength, 
86 body check. I think he had one of the higher slap shot powers at 93. More of an offensive defenseman, obviously. 93 offense awareness there. I think his poise could definitely be bumped up a bit. I feel like he definitely is a player that can play under the pressure. So, uh, Burns 87, not too bad either. Uh, Roswell Anderson here, number 18, 87 overall. I think one of the more underrated defensemen in the league as well. So, I actually agree with this rating quite a bit. Uh, looking at his stats, high 80s there for most things. Pretty good all-around guy. No glaring issues I can see. Uh, number 19 here, Phil Peronic, of course, traded from the Red Wings to the Canucks. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about this trade. Uh, we did get, you know, San and Palika from it, which I'm pretty excited about. But Peronic was having a bit of a career year last season. 90 passing reflects that. Now, his offensive defense awareness are equal. That should definitely not be the case. He's more offensive. Um, other than that, though, the rest of those stats look pretty good. Heronic 86, I think it's fair. And then finally there, Brett Pesci, round of the top 20, also an 86. I think Pesci's probably a little bit underrated there. Probably should be more like an 87. Um, okay, 82 offensive awareness for Pesci. That should definitely be higher. He's not that bad offensively. I know people do think, you know, he's more of a defensive guy, but I would say he's a pretty good, you know, two-way. Uh, so fix that. The hand-eye also 77. To me, hand-eye is not just an offensive stat. It's also defensive. Intercepting pucks, that's hand-eye coordination. Getting your stick down. I don't really see how 77 makes sense for him. So... Uh, he definitely needs a little bit of work, but that is it, guys. So top 20 defensemen. On top of that, too, he released the top 10 body-checking players in the game. Honestly, I think it's a pretty fair list. Luke Shen had the most hits last year. He's tied Truba there at number one. Truba, of course, lays a bunch of big hits, which is why kind of gets a lot of penalties for sometimes, you know, being late or whatever. Ryan Reeves, hard to argue. Lucic, Gudis as well. Matt Martin, Tom Wilson, uh, Ross Johnson. Again, I think this list is actually pretty solid. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Tomorrow I'm thinking it'll be either centers or goalie. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button to not miss it. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.